Hi friends, welcome to the my YouTube channel that is the Jio Entire. Today I am going to share one more video which is based on the what is magma or the different types of the magmas, what is the composition of the magma, fair magma templates and five magma templates. So I am trying to give the answers all these questions in this video so kindly watch this video share and subscribe my youtube channel that is the Geo so what is magma magma is mixture of molten material of the rock beside this molten material this also contains water vapors and dissolved gases there are two most abundant elements in the earth crust and matter so that is oxygen and silicon. When these oxygen and silicon combines together, then there is a formation of SiO. So the rocks are the aggregation of the minerals. When two or more minerals combines together, then there is a formation of rocks. What are the different types of magma? There are basically four types of the magmas. So that is the ultramafic, mafic, intermediate, felsic. So these are the four types of the magma. And these classification magma done on the basis of the silica content. So ultramafic magma in which silica content is less than 45%. In mafic silica content is in between 45 to 55%. Intermediate magma in which silica content is in between 55 to 65%. And in felsic magma the silica content is more than 65%. So that is the main difference in between the, these different magmas. So what are the eruption types? When we go from ultramafic to felsic, the eruption is gentle to explosive. In ultramafic magma, the eruption is generally gentle. When we go felsic, it is more explosive. Temperature also different in ultramafic uh, magma, temperature is very high because this magma came from the peridotite. Felsic magma in which silica content is more. So therefore, it is up to the nine, 900 degrees Celsius temperature. Viscosity is also different. When we see ultramafic magma having low viscosity. Intermediate magma having medium viscosity. When we see felsic magma in which high viscosity is so that is the main difference in between ultramafic, mafic, intermediate and felsic magma. Generally, there this magma is composed of different gases. So the gases are dissolved in magma at high pressure beneath the earth. Due to presence of gases, formation of separate vapor phases. But when pressure is decreased as magma rises towards the surface of the earth, it is very similar to the cold rings bottom filled with high pressure gas. The presence of gas in magma gives explosive nature to magma because volume of gas expands when pressure is reduced. The magma is composed of mostly water vapors that is the H2O and some amount of carbon dioxide that is the CO2. In minor amounts there may be sulfur, chlorine, fluorine etc. Gases are present. The amount of gas present in the magma plays very important role in the composition of the magma. Felsic or acidic magma usually have higher gas contents than mafic magma. Because of this felsic magma have more explosive nature than mafic magma or basaltic magma. So the next question is the, in our mind arises fair magma generates. Many people think that magma generates at great depth that is the outer core because it is liquid in state but in reality outer core is not the source of silicate magma as we know that our core is mostly has composition iron and nickel magma originates in the lower part of the earth crust and upper portion of the mantle when we see iron and nickel comes on their surface when iron comes on their surface from the outer core automatically there will be no human life, there will be no plant life 
in the nature because it absorbs all the oxygen from that iron. So that is not source of the silicate magma out of it. Since the rest of the earth is solid, in order for magma to form, some part of the earth must get hot enough to melt the present rocks. Then magma does not occur everywhere below us. There are only some places, there are only some specific places where volcanoes exist. This means that magma is formed under some special conditions which exist in some limited areas. So, next question that is the how magma generates? What are the mechanisms of the uh, mechanisms which are responsible for the magma generation? So, there are two dozen, more than two dozen mechanisms which are responsible for the magma generation. But each and every mechanism is just change in pressure, temperature, and chemical composition of that particular liquid. So, first mechanism is the increase in temperature or increase in geothermal gradient. Temperature increases with the depth or pressure in the earth along the geothermal gradient. The normal geothermal gradient, gradient is somewhat higher beneath the continents, at least at shallow levels. But when we observe the normal geothermal gradient, we find under normal condition, the geothermal gradient is not high enough to melt rocks. That is why that with the exception of outer core, most of the earth is in solid state. Thus the geothermal gradient is not a very substantial factor contributing in the formation of the magma. See in this figure, that is the yellow line indicates the geothermal gradient. Okay. After that, when just temperature is increases, automatically it cuts the solidus and converted into liquidus. In this way, increase in geothermal gradient, automatically there will be generated magma. This is the first mechanism. The second mechanism, lower the pressure. When pressure is decreases, there are two things which are very, very important. First is that very high pressure in mantle rocks prevent atoms with minerals from breaking chemical bonds and moving freely from one another to form magma. Therefore, most rocks within the mantle do not melt even though their temperature may be greater than that necessary to melt the same rocks at the lower pressure of the earth's surface. However, if something occurs that the pressure on the mantle rock is decreased, the atoms may move freely from one another. This would result in the partial melting of the already very hot solid rock. This process is called as pressure release melting. It is scientifically proved theory and it is found in the common along divergent plate margins and within the mantle plumes. The third one, third mechanism is the addition of water, that is the H2. The addition of small amounts of water to peridotite will result in decrease in the melting temperature. That is a common phenomenon. We, when we take one substance, when we take sugar and add some amount of water, automatically the melting point of that particular sugar will be decreases. So same phenomenon has been taken place here. This is largely due to the electrically polished polarized nature of water molecule as there is an equal distribution of electron around. The water molecule, the electrical polarization cause a decrease in cation anion bond strains within minerals and so at very high temperature the bonds may be broken so that atoms may move freely from one another to form a magma. This process also results in partial melting of the mantle rock this type of melting occurs within the subduction zone as water is squeezed from the subducted ocean lithosphere into the overlying ultramatic mantle bed. So in this way, the magma is generated. So this is the simple phenomenon we can see in this figure also how the uh, addition of water decreases the uh, melting point of particular that uh, rock. In this way, magma is generated. So I think. This will be uh, beneficial or very informative to you. With this, I stop here. We will again watch next video for taking new aspect in the subject.